Uh. Hey everyone, this is Effort Effects, and today we're going to be covering plot armor, how to avoid it, and still write believable and exciting scenes. Let's get stuck right in. Plot armor refers to a common trope where character to characters will get out of a situation where death should have been assured, but is avoided by convenient to fucking ridiculous circumstances by the writer. For example, your character's driving a plane listening to Katy Perry, you know, the usual, before suddenly the back of the plane blows open. They get sucked out, crashed towards the earth, only to land in a haystack covered in pillows. This is plot armor. Most readers will have a certain level of suspension of disbelief. People will understand your story isn't going to be a million percent realistic. But when people be living after falling out of planes, we have a problem. How to avoid plot armor. Firstly, you're going to have to accept that your character in all likelihood will probably have a light coating of plot armor. Very few of any adventure books would have ever been made if the MC had died after their first troll hit them. Plot armor is needed in some shape or form, and we, the wordsmiths, are here to make sure it takes the exact form we want. There are three main methods to ensure this. The first is an equal playing field. Our characters must play by the same rules as everyone else. Exceptions just can't be made out of nowhere. So if a magic lightning bolt turns people to ash, but only singes your character's hair, you're using plot armor, unless you have a very good reason otherwise. Here's a bad example of plot armor. Blood poured out of Mark's chest. The bullet had hit his heart. I looked down to see a small hole in my shirt just below my neck. With shaking hands I felt beneath my shirt. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have an injury. Whereas a good example. Blood poured out of Mark's chest. The bullet had hit his heart. I looked down to see a small hole in my shirt, just below my neck. With shaking hands I felt beneath my shirt. A stinging pain shot across my body. My body armor had saved my life and it only cost me a bruise. The second is having a logical, in-universe explanation. Add a character who got stabbed in the heart, then several other times in the chest. Oh, and I can't forget the arm that got lopped off, that, that too. However, long before that happened, the reader was well aware that he was superhuman, with a healing factor thousands of times better than any normal human. Even then, his allies had to stitch and bandage him together, just to stabilise him enough not to die on the spot. And this is a guy who could get shot every morning for breakfast. Even then, weeks after, he was shaking until he fully recovered. I didn't have to create something to save his life. It was already pre-established, so it was easy. I had another character get shot point blank in the head only to survive without a scratch due to my current book's power system. I laid breadcrumbs that he had a power so when he did survive it wasn't that surprising. I didn't even need to bait and switch my readers that he died, he just stood there and took it like a man. I mean, yeah a man, he was crying, drenched in his own urine and shaking in fear, but still a man. In both examples a normal human would have died in my universe, or if the second character didn't have a non-defensive power he would have died, no exceptions made. The third, and the one you have to be most careful with, is skill-based avoidance. These are instances where characters get out of a bad situation through the use of physical strength, speed, intelligence, or straight up by using any skill they possess. These are fine if they're plausible. Take for instance the examples on screen. The good examples first. A normal male human fighting off a single unarmed mugger. Plausible. Doesn't, you wouldn't even need real training for that. It's possible. A super soldier in power armor be able to take several bullets. Again, pretty reasonable as long as you've established that armor's that strong. A professional driver able to get away from a big massive police pursuit. Unlikely, but it could happen. And a scientist creating a solution by melting a lock in the science lab after he was trapped. Again, the pre-established knowledge could be used to get out of that situation. These are quite good examples and they're fair enough. Now the bad examples, a normal male human fighting off two armed muggers, I don't think so, he's gonna get shot. Even if you have training in terms of fighting, you can't avoid bullets, you die. A regular soldier able to survive several bullet hits by avoiding vital organs? Eh, I mean, yeah, if you know he's in a hospital getting shot on the operating table, maybe, maybe. A regular person able to get away from a three car helicopter pursuit? Uh, I doubt it. Without any skills or training in some way, shape or form, you're gonna get caught. And finally, an average Joe creating that same solution to melt the lock, he would probably blow himself up or at least, at the very minimum, get his eyebrows singed off. Just ensure you don't let your character become super strong or super intelligent or knowledgeable out of nowhere. Don't get your character to become smarter or have a skill that they've never alluded to or used before. 
and especially don't let any characters go beyond the limits of your established world. For example, allowing a wizard to teleport the entire planet after teleportation was explained to be difficult, even for a simple cup, that would be going a little too far. Pre-establish. For all the points I've given and for any good piece of believable writing, you want to pre-establish as much as you can as early as you can. This can be done innocuously early on with some light exposition or even with passing references. This will help you avoid the entire problem with plot armor, which is that it seems to come out of nowhere. If you can explain to your readers that the character can read minds and sometimes people with this ability can control minds, when your character saves themselves from being shot point blank by simply telling slash mentally forcing a gunman to drop his gun, it is believable. Or better yet, if you establish early on that your character's power armor, for example, can take nearly any amount of small arms fire, when he does, it means the reader will barely register it and will know it's believable. You won't need to justify it in their heads. Healing. If your character gets stabbed 20 times, don't have one of his allies run into the forest just to come back and say, it's our lucky day, guys. I just found this rock. His name's Greg. He speaks. No questions, guys. He says you can heal her, but only as long as we keep him as a pet. You know, for the next time, the author can't come up with anything else. You know, guys, it's, it's great. His name's Greg. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. Don't do this. Don't add it in. If a character stops and there's no help nearby, let him die. That's how it is. Unless you've established that somebody somewhere has already done something. So say, oh, there was a witch's shack half a mile back. You have to run back and go to here. That's fine. Dead on. But do not pull shit out of your ass like a rock named Greg. Coming back from the dead. This is a slippery slope to say the least. If a character comes back from the dead, it's A, a cop out for your reader, as they'll feel cheated, and B, going to remove nearly any tension from future death scenes. Think of the TV series Supernatural, where uh, Dean's always like, Sally, Sally, you know, and then Dean replies, will you shut up, Dean? I found this witch that said she'd bring you back, Jesus Christ. If you're going to use, uh, like, resurrection, ensure you've added in a hefty price onto them. For example, an entire town needs sacrificed under a full moon that's only there every 10 years. Fair enough, that's hard to replicate, if nearly impossible in some cases. So it's not too much of a cheat, but just once again, make sure it's pre-established and you're not just pulling it out of nowhere. And that's it for the video, guys. And I just wanted to point out that not just amateurish work is really, really susceptible to plot armor. If any's watch Game of Thrones, no spoilers. Season 8, Episode 3, plot armor so thick that a grenade wouldn't get through it. And if you're applying plot armor like that, and this is these are professional writers, by the way, if they can suck at it, just know that you're going to be a pro very, very soon. And you're going to be writing up the new Game of Thrones where plot armor is removed and everyone really dies in the first episode. Because that's what really would happen. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. Have a great day. Best luck in writing the book. And I'll see you next time.